Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, and chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then annuls one of the least of, the, of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell. A great fall was it. When Jesus had finished these words, the, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Here ends the reading. A couple of years ago, we went on vacation, not to Long Beach Island, but we, we stayed in Seaside Heights. But then we took a trip to Long Beach Island and we drove all the way to the tip where Old Barney stands. Old Barney is this lighthouse, all the way built there, and it goes way back to the 1800s. Before there was GPS, before there were navigating tools for boats and for ships out on the Atlantic. And when it was dark and the storms and the waves and those navigating the troubled and stormy waters did not know and did not have the orientation to get into safely in the harbor. There was this huge, tall lighthouse to shine and give them orientation. To shine and to guide people and to give them orientation. That's what Jesus calls us to do. Sorry, what's next here? Okay. When little Samuel, Samuel was this little boy. He was brought to Eli in the temple in the Old Testament. And it says in that scripture that the light of God, the lamp of of God in the temple was not extinguished yet. So the light was close to flickering, almost like going out. 
But the scripture says it was not quite out yet. There were a lot of people, many injustices. The priests' sons were just wreaking havoc and abusing the treasures of the temple, all of that. But the light of God, the Lamb of God, was not quite yet extinguished. It was still there to shine in the darkness. Whether it is a fire in the temple or whether it's in the synagogue, the eternal light in the synagogues is reflection of the light of God. It's hanging right by the ark, the ark of the covenant where they store the scrolls, the Torah, the scriptures. A light hangs there as a reminder that God's light shines and those who were here last Sunday, you see the red light, the eternal light. It's a reminder that God's light, God's spirit is very much alive in our midst and in each one of us. And we're invited to pay attention to it, to become aware of that light of God in us and in other people just to become aware and to let that shine, basically to be that positive presence through actions, just through when you say someone is alive, someone is shining, someone has a glow, it's, it's kind of this beauty, this radiating, and you see some people having that other people keep it inside, and I think it's part of extroversion and introversion. Sometimes we see the bubbly people, and they're all over the place, and think of, yeah, that is really visible, cheering on, letting others, the light shine. But I think there is a deep part in people who are more introverted, a light that shines inside that you can feed that flame and that wants to be nurtured and that you are to be connected to and to open up to. For some, we have this nightlight in our homes when it feels like it's getting too dark or too scary or when children feel scared we turn a little bit of a light on so just a reflection of that light shines and nothing can extinguish it so that's the light we are to let shine just like good old barney raise it up let it shine it's the same light that gave the name to the whole enlightenment, a whole era in history. Enlightenment, you see like sometimes when you talk with people, when you teach or when you're aware, you see sometimes it's like a light bulb goes off. You got it, you got it. It's like that is the light coming, getting the awareness, becoming enlightened. And when you are in New York City and look there, the Statue of Liberty, right there with the flame up, holding the flame to shine. So think of yourself, either as old Barney, or as the Statue of Liberty. Let your light shine. How about the salt? Salt has been used in ancient times for very different purposes. One was to preserve food. Those who ever lived in the South, you know, the good old country ham, it was cured with lots of salt and smoked, and that preserved it. Good hanging out there, wouldn't go bad. Flies wouldn't touch it, too much salt, it preserved it. 
Now, they didn't have, have ham in Israel at that time, but they had fish. What do you do with fish in the summer? Well, it gets very quickly. But when you cover it with salt, when you pat it and when you let it dry, it's just like a good ham. It dries and it preserves it. So the one purpose of salt is to preserve things, preserve the value of fish, of ham, of the values of society, of relationships, of what makes things work. So Jesus is saying, you're the salt of the earth. You're the preservers. You are to keep and maintain what really has value, what is important. The other piece, we heard it here. You eat the French fries, no salt, no good. So it brings out the flavor in things. Jesus saying you're the salt of the earth means you bring out the flavor in other people. You're the seasoning. You just yourself, your aliveness, your just you bring the best out in others. How beautiful that is. Now, one thing about salt, rub it in, rub it in the wound, in the salt. The salt in the wound, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the times when we did not have antibiotics, when we didn't have neosporine or anything else. The battlefield in Gettysburg, when they were wounded, what do you use to disinfect? Salt. It may sting, it may hurt, but it has a purpose to disinfect, to help the healing. So we are to be like salt, helping the healing of the nation, helping the healing of relationships, being that salt. And salt was so valuable, so treasure, such a treasure, that people were paid with salt. The word salary comes from salt, salary salt. And you know when you hear it, are you worth your salt? Are you worth your salary? Are you worth? It was so valuable, treasurable. So when Jesus says, you are the salt, he says, you are valuable. You're a treasure. You are very important. And your job is to preserve like the food, to heal like the wound, to bring out the flavor in the world. You are those people. Two questions. Where and how did you experience someone else being either salt of the earth or light of the world? Where and how did some people shine on you, reflected light and helped you come alive, either as salt of the earth or as light of the world. The second question, where and how can you and will you let your light shine? Where and how will you let your light shine? The one thing that is never in doubt is that Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are it. 
You are it. Jesus sees it in you. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. How will you let it shine? How will you? 